Previously, we learned about light and its peculiar properties. It seems to behave in its own way, showing both particle as well as wave nature. Now, de Broglie, in his PhD paper, suggested that if our so-called waves can have a particle nature, then our so-called particles should also have a wave nature. So he obtained an equation equating the most fundamental property present in both particles and waves, energy. From classical mechanics, we know that mass and energy are equivalent and an object with mass m has an energy E equals Tc, where P is the momentum of the object and C is the velocity. Now, from our recent understanding of quantum nature of a photon particle, we know a photon particle, now generalized as any particle, has energy h nu equals hc by lambda. So, equating both, we obtain pc equals hc by lambda. Cancelling c, we get lambda equals h by p. This says that every moving particle has an associated matter wave with it, with a wavelength of lambda. But what is a matter wave? Previously, we have known two kinds of waves. Mechanical waves like sound waves that travel through a medium, and electromagnetic waves which travel through medium as well as vacuum, that is, do not need a medium. But matter wave is different from both. It is always associated with matter. Now, the first question to ask would be, how can we see the Broglie wave? Is it an existing physical wave? We have a tendency to understand physics through our observations. We feel sound waves through our ears, light waves through eyes. But how do we measure matter waves? How do we know it exists? have made detectors to calculate wavelengths of electromagnetic waves and sound waves. But what about matter waves? Now let's first calculate the wavelengths of some common objects using de Broglie's relation. Lambda equals h by p. Let's consider the earth. It has a weight of about 6 into 10 to the power 27 grams and a velocity of 3 into 10 to the power 6 centimeters per second. What is the lambda? Calculating we get it 3.6 into 10 to the power minus 61 centimeters. That is fantastically small. Nothing can measure that. Now let's come to our daily life situation. Calculate the wavelength of a 100 gram stone moving with 100 centimeters per second. Its de Broglie wavelength turns out to be 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 31 centimeters. That's also a million, million, million times smaller than the atomic nucleus. Just hopeless to be detected. Talking of an atom, now let's go to atomic scale. Let's take an electron. An electron accelerates through a potential of 1 volt has an average velocity of 6 into 10 to the power 7 centimeters per second. Now calculating lambda for this, we get approximately 10 to the power minus 7 centimeter, which is close to the wavelength of an X-ray. This should be detectable. Seeing this light of hope, deviation and German performed an experiment. Revolutionized science. It is popularly known as deviation German experiment. So let's see what gave the first proof of wave particle duality among particles. He showered a beam of electrons which were reflected through a crystal and then seen at a screen. It was observed that instead of finding a continuous band, he found an alternative band of high and low densities of electrons a diffraction pattern in electrons. This was the proof of wave nature of matter, and this marked the base of Schrodinger's equation, which we'll discuss in the next lecture. For now, let's go back to atomic theory of Bohr. Bohr proposed another quantization theory to deal with the predictions of atoms. 
He proposed that angular momentum is quantized and an integral multiple of h by 2 pi. MVR equals nh by 2 pi. It turns out that this comes as a consequence of de Broglie hypothesis. Let's try to prove it. We know lambda equals h by mv. Now you see the matter wave associated should be an integral multiple of the wavelength. Otherwise, it would cancel out doing destructive interference. So 2 pi r equals n lambda. Now replacing lambda with the previous equation, we get mvr equals nh by 2 pi or nh bar. Quantization of a single property implied that everything about atom is quantized, that is its energy and every other things associated with it is quantized. This marked the beginning of quantum mechanics or quantized theory of matter. Now matter is neither a particle nor a wave but a superimposition of both particle and wave. Only under observation does the character of matter collapse to show either particle or wave effect. To understand this principle of superimposition, let's take a look into the famous Schrodinger's sort experiment, the experiment with the Schrodinger's cat. Schrodinger imagined a cat being put in a box with poison which is triggered by radioactive decay. Now there are two cases possible. Either the cat would be dead or alive. But Schrodinger suggested a different approach. He said that the cat would be both dead and alive at the same time until we open the box. That is, it would be in a superimposition of being alive and dead at the same time. And until we observe it, it does not take a particular state. Now, how much absurd it may sound to you, it is very much true in case of quantum objects like electrons. A quantum object remains in a superimposition of a number of states and collapses down to a single state only under observation can be observed in an interference of electron experiment. Electrons are showered over the two slits of a double slit experiment and we observe the screen we observe an interference pattern. But when we observe the slits and determine from which slit the electron is crossing, it shows two discrete bands, creating particle behavior. So the state of the electron is determined by our observations. This difficult nature of quantum mechanics is hard to grasp. Many interpretations like the Copenhagen interpretation were developed from this experiment. The dual nature of wave and particle and the relation between them has been discussed over here. Next, we will try to write down the wave equation of a quantum particle, the Schrodinger's wave equation. So subscribe and stay tuned.